Uh, uh, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. Fall fresh on me. As a matter of fact, Lord, don't just stop and park on your servant, but move throughout this sanctuary. Touch us in a powerful and potent way that we might prevail over the problems that we experience in our lives. You are a problem-solving God. You will work it out for us. Speak to us now. A right now ready word that will help us to be more effective in our spiritual walk with you. Have your way with us. On this Palm Sunday morning. And God, we're going to be careful to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise that is due you this day. Speak now, God, for your servant heareth in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Um, Matthew chapter 21. Thank God for the reading of the word earlier. Uh, Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. I'm going to read just verse 8 and 9, if I, if, if I can. Uh, reads thusly, A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those who followed, they shouted, Hosanna! To the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Uh, Hosanna in the highest. Uh, I want to share with you for a few moments on this thought. A Palm Sunday praise. A Palm Sunday praise. A Palm Sunday praise. Can I ask you the question this morning? Are you ready to give God praise on Palm Sunday? I mean, I, I, I know you have your palm, uh, uh, palm branches and all, and you came ripe and ready for this moment to celebrate uh, uh, Palm Sunday, what we call the first week of passion or what we call the Holy Week and all. I know that you probably came with your sophistication, but may I ask you a question? Did you really come to praise God on Palm Sunday? I mean, I mean, did you really come to praise God? I mean, were, were you like me? Were you itching to get here? Were you, were you, were you, were you itching to were you, were you itching last night when you went to bed? You couldn't wait to get here today because it's Palm Sunday and you have a Palm Sunday praise. As a matter of fact, I declare that there's probably some people that are itching right now. Itching right now. You're itching with me because you're just ready to burst out of the scene and give God praise on this Palm Sunday. It's a Palm Sunday moment of praise. I come to celebrate God for all that the Lord has done uh, for us. Yeah, yeah. So, so during, really during this, uh, this, this, uh, during Passover time, Passover time, Passover time, Jerusalem, it was, it was crowded. Streets were crowded. I mean, every Jewish, uh, every Jewish adult, uh, from really a, a, a 20 mile or so, maybe more radius, was obligated to attend the celebration. And, and this number was added uh, to by many, many more who would crowd in from further afield for this particular occasion. Streets were crowded with people. They were coming to celebrate the Passover. One writer tells us that the city was teeming with people as many as two and a half million might have been in Jerusalem. They were there to commemorate the Passover, an event that had taken place 1,500 years earlier. You know when God delivered his people from the land of bondage in order to lead them to the promised land. I'm so glad we're delivered. Uh, <laughs> Look at somebody say, I'm delivered, I'm delivered. I don't know about you, but I'm delivered. I've been set free. I'm not perfect, but I've been delivered and I'm set free. 
I'm not wrapped up and tied up no more. I'm free. Uh, the devil thought he had me, but I'm free. How about you? Uh, the triumphal entry, my beloved, as it is called, occurred on Sunday of Passion Week. Week. It, it is one of the events that all four Gospels record, giving the, the occasion great significance. Yeah. Jesus, the Passover lamb, the lamb, Jesus is the Passover lamb, the Passover lamb. He heads into Jerusalem uh, for the last time. He's going in for the last time going into the last time, where he initiates a massive public demonstration as he offers himself to be the king of Israel, king of Israel. Keep in mind that normally Jesus moved quietly and preferred obscurity many times, charging those he healed to tell nobody tell nobody. Matthew chapter 8 verse number 4. Here, however, he sets in motion a huge crusade. Why? I'm glad you asked the question. It probably was so the Jews would never be able to say, if we had only had the opportunity to embrace you as our king, we certainly would have done so. He, he stripped away that excuse from the Jewish nation when he rode into Jerusalem and publicly offered himself to them as their Messiah. This event is the installation of the Prince of Peace as King of Kings. I'm so glad he is the King of Kings. Aren't you glad about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was, he was, he was on his way. He was on his way to die, but, but somebody declared, and we'll be able to talk about it, chat about it a little bit on next week, but early on Sunday morning. Uh, look at somebody say he got up. He got up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prince of Peace, Prince of Peace, King of Kings. Now, now, as we contemplate Palm Sunday, this uh, this Palm Sunday praise, uh, I want to consider first of all what the King comes to us in peace. The King comes in peace. Look at somebody say peace. Jesus is, Jesus is coming into Jerusalem is a climax for which anticipated uh, anticipation has been building ever since the disciples had identified Jesus as the Christ, the son of the living God. At Caesarea Philippi, Jesus can then declare that he must go to Jerusalem. Now he arrives. Not only is the place itself significant, but his arrival at the time of the Passover festival uh, is significant for the Passover was itself a clear foreshadowing of his own death as the Passover lamb over lamb. John the Baptist introduced Jesus to the world as the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It is significant that Jesus Christ was proclaimed to the world as God's Passover lamb by, by, uh, by God's chosen herald. Yeah. Matthew's account of the triumphal entry begins with Jesus sending two disciples in verse 1. They crossed the Jordan. They traveled south uh, through Piria to avoid Samaria, which brought them through Jericho. And so Jesus and his disciples had come to Bethphage, which is called the House of Figs. From the east as they came up the road from Jericho. Now it appears that Jesus stayed at the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus for several days including the Sabbath. He initiates his final week by sending two of his disciples ahead into a village, possibly Bethany, to find a donkey with a coat and to bring the animal to him. 
Jesus, Jesus sent his disciples ahead to make preparation for his prophetic entrance into Jerusalem in verse 2 and 3, saying to them, go into the village opposite of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. Then he says, if anyone says anything to you, you shall say to them, the Lord needs them, and immediately he will send them. I wish I could I wish I could just pause here for a minute and declare to somebody who's sitting here today that the Lord needs you. Not some of you, he needs all of you. And if you have yet to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, may I offer Jesus to you right now in this moment. Accept him as your personal Lord and Savior because he needs you. He's got work for you to do. And in order for you to do the work, you have to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. May I offer you the invitation to Christian discipleship in the middle of the message and say, come to Jesus. Just as you are broken, wounded, raggedy, and messed up, it doesn't matter where you were last night, who you were with on yesterday, it doesn't matter who you got up with this morning, he's not concerned about that. He just said, come, because I got something for you to do. Look at somebody, tell them, come. Uh, uh, uh. Though all four gospel accounts include the triumphal entry, only Matthew mentioned a donkey along with an unbroken colt. A simple explanation of what some call a contradiction is that when Jesus rode the colt, the mother donkey naturally went along or that bringing the donkey's mama was necessary to bring the unbroken colt. Because if the unbroken coat is close to mama, then the unbroken coat will behave itself. Uh, perhaps he rode each animal part of the distance. Well, Jesus told the disciples to bring the animals to him. If there was any question as to what the future apostles were doing, they were to reference that it was from the Lord. Uh, it was from the Lord. Uh, the use of the title Lord indicates the owner was a disciple of Jesus who had somehow, by God's providence, been prepared for this event. Nothing happens by coincidence. Everything is in God's divine providence. Everything that happens, God is in the midst of. That's why you're here today, because God was in the middle of your mess. Yeah, that's why, that's why, that's why I saw a few minutes ago about 30 of y'all praising God like you had no cotton picking sense. You praise God the way you praise him because had it not been for God disrupting your business, you wouldn't be where you are right now. Uh, uh. I want to preach. I really want to preach this. As a Messiah, he had the right to request whatever he needed. He had the right to request what he needed. He's the Messiah. The blessing of his followers is to supply out of what he has already received from God's hands. That's just a better way of saying that God supplies all of our need according to his riches and his in glory. And when God supplies to us, we give back to God what God gave to us in the first place to be a blessing to somebody else <laughs> you think you think that you think you think that you have what you have because you look good <laughs> you think you have what you have because of your pedigree you think you have what you have because of your rank and file you think you have what you have because of who you married you think you have what you have because of the institution you graduated from I came by here to tell you that you only made it because somebody else is blessed Blessing along the way. <sighs> you were able to go to college because somebody who had a little bit of money cleaning somebody's bathrooms made a way for you to go. I wish I had 10 witnesses who could testify to the fact that somebody was waiting tables for you to get what 
what you have right now. You didn't see it, but God was working on your behalf. And because of that, somebody ought to have enough sense to say thank you. Thank you. I got to get a praise break right now. And thank God because it was the Lord that made a way. You didn't do it. God did it. Look at somebody say, I'm so glad God did it. clean and nasty filthy bathrooms and you got a college degree wiping up somebody's nasty floor and you've got the job of your life had it not been for somebody else it seems clear it seems clear that our Lord arranged to ride the young donkey into Jerusalem as a deliberate fulfillment of prophecy. He did it on purpose. Uh, that's a word for somebody. God did what he did for you on purpose. It wasn't an accident that you're sitting where you are right now. God blessed you on purpose. But he didn't bless you to sit. He blessed you to be a blessing to somebody else. Uh, yeah, the prophecy, the prophecy. Look at somebody say prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. The prophecy, the prophecy referenced in Zechariah 9 and 9 and Isaiah 62 and 11 foretold the coming of Israel's king in a, in a gentle manner riding on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. A donkey colt would be a symbol of humility and peace, peace. Humility and peace. Peace. Look at somebody say peace, peace. Jesus was not only proclaiming that he is the Messiah with the fulfilling of scripture, but also demonstrating that he did not come to conquer, but imposing his will over the nations. Note that the Messiah is referred to by the term king. Such a lowly entrance was not the normal way that kings arrived. Kings didn't arrive the way Jesus arrived. Rulers usually came as conquerors riding on a prancing stallion. But Jesus entered Jerusalem not on a on a charger, but on a lowly beast of burden, not on a horse as a symbol of power and authority, but on a colt of a donkey as a symbol of humility. Yeah, he could come as a symbol of humility because he had all power. He didn't have to stand up and walk around like he had it going on because he already had it. That's why we shouldn't complain and mope about our situation because God is already working on your case right now. He's already working the power through you and blessing you because you're going to be a blessing to somebody else. Oh, let me move quickly through this. I'm ready to, I'm ready to, I'm ready to shout. Look at somebody say then, shout then, man. <sighs> Uh, don't don't hold it back. Uh, go on and shout. Uh, I'm gonna be a good Methodist and shout for Jesus. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. But not only does the king come in peace, but secondly, the king uh, the king is hailed by the people. He's hailed by the people. Verse 6 and 7, note uh, the obedience on the part of the disciples involved. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them. And he brought the donkey and the colt and laid their coats on them. And he sat on the coats. Most of the crowd spread their coats on the road and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. Notice that the disciples did just as Jesus instructed them to do. That is what all disciples of Jesus are to do. The disciples got the animals. They threw their garments on them to make saddles. When Jesus mounted up the disciples and the Galilean crowd, then recognized the prophetic illusion and turned the approach into a triumphal entry or a processional. 
having no magnificent carpets to spread on the road over which the king was to ride. People in the large crowd, they spread their cloaks and tree branches on the road. Let me add that this spreading of palm branches five days before Good Friday, seven days before the resurrection is where we extract our celebration of Palm Sunday. So most of these people were pilgrims from Galilee on their way to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. They were familiar with Jesus and the many miracles he had performed in Galilee, particularly raising Lazarus from the dead. The crowd spreading garments and palm branches on the road, as was often done in triumphal uh, processions, is a hopeful acknowledgement of Jesus' kingship. Many were anticipating that Jesus was coming to set up his reign in Israel's capital. Obviously, with the treatment of Jesus that occurs later in the week, most of this, uh, the crowd's real hope was uh, to cash in on this prophet who fed the multitude and performed miracles of healing. The same thing happens today, for there can be a propensity, a proclivity within our hearts of each of us to cash in on Jesus' blessings. If you, if you are expecting Jesus to be a good luck charm for you, if you expect him to help you financially, physically, socially, and vocationally, you will be disappointed when things don't go the way you thought they would go. You need to realize, somebody needs to hear me, that Jesus came to die for our sins and to pay the price for our iniquities. That's why he came. He came to die for our sins and he came to pay the price. If Jesus never, can I say it like this? Because I really want to shout. I'm really ready to, let's go ahead and take this thing off and go. Can we go? Look, if Jesus never does anything else in this present life, his forgiveness is more than enough to merit your loyalty, your affection, and your eternal devotion. If he never does another thing for me, if he never gives another blessing to me, if he never shows up and gives me what I asked for, I owe him my life because of what he did on Calvary. If he doesn't do anything else, he's already done enough for me to say thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> now turn back the calendar to a Sunday morning around A.D. 33. The city is Jerusalem. There's no TVs, no television, no, no. But, but, there, but there's a preacher who stirs the hopes of an excited crowd. For three years, he's been going about Judea and Galilee, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, and even raising the dead. Now, he rides into Jerusalem on a colt, gladly receiving the praise of the crowd. Yeah, did you know that he receives the praise? Your praise? Yeah, yeah, he receives it. And yeah, that's why you give it because he receives it. If he didn't receive it, you wouldn't give it. He gives it to you, and so you receive it. And when you receive it, you throw up praise. He receives it, and then he throws back, and it just keeps going on and on. Like the gospel writer said, until the break of dawn. Uh, yeah, uh, but but those but those who shout Hosanna are receiving uh, him for what they think he will give them, not for who he is and what he came to do. They want an they want an earthly Messiah who will provide for their material welfare, not a suffering Messiah whose death on the cross will expose their sin, provide forgiveness, and call for a life changing commitment. Jesus. Jesus didn't promise release from all suffering in your life, but he did offer forgiveness, peace, and eternal life and a cross. Anything less than taking up that cross and serving him is shallow allegiance. The Greek word easy appears only once in the New Testament, and then it's connected with yoke. Yeah, you know it, you know it, Matthew 11, verse, uh, chapter 11, verse number 30. For my yoke is easy, and my burden, 
is like, come on, let me go ahead and, and give you this third piece. Uh, uh, finally, finally, uh, the king is, he's adorned with praise. He's adorned with praise. Look at somebody say, we getting ready to praise. We getting ready. Uh, uh, look at somebody else say, it's praise time. It's praise time. The next occurrence in verse 9 indicates the openness of the crowds led by the disciples to Jesus. The crowds going ahead of him and those who followed, they were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As the people walked along, some before Jesus, some behind him, further adding to the picture of a royal procession. The crowds were probably singing some of the pilgrims' songs of ascent. They shouted uh, uh, that Greek word, ekrazan, to Jesus and to each other, Hosanna to the son of David. Now, Hosanna, Simon Temple, is from the Hebrew word that means uh, uh, save, deliver us, we pray. Save, deliver us, we pray. Somebody ought to write it down. Say, deliver us, we pray. Every time you say Hosanna, you say, save, deliver us, we pray. Every time you say Hosanna, you say, save, deliver us, we pray. It comes from Psalm 118 and verse number 25. It was an acknowledgment of power as well as petition. It was a prayer for deliverance. The prayer for deliverance through their thinking was probably from the Romans instead of their slavery from sin. They wanted to be delivered from the Romans. They weren't thinking about their sins. They we're thinking about being delivered from the Romans. Uh, Jesus is also called the son of David. Uh, he, they also say the one who comes. Uh, Hosanna in the highest reference. The one whom the angels on high acknowledge or call upon. They are asking that heaven join them in praising God for sending Jesus. Yeah, all these uh, designations, these titles, these names reference that Jesus is Yahweh's representative, his Messiah or Christ. Luke records in 1939 and 40, Jesus has saying that the power of his entrance was so moving that if people had not responded in praise, that the rocks themselves would have cried out. Yeah, did y'all hear what I just said? He said that it was so powerful, his entrance was so moving, had the people not cried out, the rocks would have just cried out. Yeah, yeah. While the crowd didn't fully understand the significance of this event, they seemed to be acknowledging that this one is the promised descendant of David who has come to grant them salvation, both their action and words bestowed honor on this one uh, coming into Zion at the last presentation himself publicly as their king. Yeah. Well, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city widely erupted. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just I just spoke prophecy <laughs> over somebody's life. <laughs> when stuff starts to erupt around you, that just simply means Jesus is there. <laughs> Oh, you missed it. Uh, look at your neighbor. Tell him you missed your chance to really shout. Uh, you, thought, you thought that the disruption around you came from the devil, but I came to tell you it didn't come from the devil. It came from Jesus. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The city erupted with excitement. Now, the Greek word translated moved or stirred is say, oh, from which we get the word seismic. It is rendered quake, earthquake. In other words, the whole city was quaking. Not physically, but mentally and emotionally. When Jesus made his entry, his coming shook the city mentally and morally as an earthquake might shake a city physically. Sadly, the excitement of the crowd in the end was not matched by a fateful commitment to Jesus. Their confession that Jesus was a prophet turned out to be inadequate to sway the crowd to the true belief that comes from repentance. One wonders how many of those who enthusiastically cried, Hosanna, 
on Palm Sunday were shouting, crucify him. A few days later, on Friday, some people must have been disappointed, even resentful that Christ didn't overthrow the Romans and set up an earthly kingdom. After all, hadn't Jesus himself created a golden opportunity to rally support as he rode into Jerusalem? In contrast to his earthly actions, he didn't try to dampen this jubilation, uh, jubilant demonstration, yet he didn't capitalize on the energy of the crowd and the issue a uh, call to arms. No wonder those who longed uh, only for release from foreign domination were disillusioned. They were messed up because they were expecting Jesus to do something different. But Jesus did exactly what he purposed to do. Can I just say this to somebody? Stop expecting Jesus to do what you want Jesus to do and just let Jesus do what Jesus assigned to do for your life. Uh, uh, what Jesus, what Jesus, what Jesus' contemporaries failed to recognize was that before he could assert his outward sovereignty, he had to rule the inner fortress of the human heart. Yeah, the greatest need of every Jew was not freedom from Caesar's legions, but release from the chains of their own sin condition. Jesus would rule in power and glory one day, but first he had to pay sin's penalty on the cross. Can I ask you a question? Are you glad that he died on the cross for your sins? You look at somebody and say, I'm sure enough glad. I'm glad. You just don't know how glad I am. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. Yeah. The key, the key to the kingdom was not revolution. No, the key wasn't revolution. It wasn't revolution. It was repentance. A turning from the world's influence, human desires, and the enemy, and follow Jesus with praise. Uh, Y'all didn't get that, did you? Yeah, I'm a turn from the world's influences and desires, and I'm a turn from the enemy, and I'm gonna follow Jesus with praise. Look at somebody say with praise, with praise. Down through the centuries, the issues they haven't changed. If you follow Jesus solely because you think He will shield you from life's difficulties, heal all your sicknesses and guarantee prosperity. You are he headed for, for disillusionment. But if you renounce sin, if you take up your cross and you live for Jesus because he is Lord, your creator and redeemer, you will never be disappointed in him and create a moment in your life, in your space to give God praise. Yeah, come on, let's praise God. I need, I need you to do this because it's praise time hey, you got to create you've got to create space around you uh, for praise now you didn't hear me you've got to create space around you for praise well well Duke Wellington the British military leader who defeated Napoleon at Waterloo was not an easy man to serve under he was brilliant he was demanding and not one to shower his uh, subordinates with compliments. Yet, even Wellington realized that this method left something to be desired. In his old age, a young lady asked him what, if anything, he would do differently if he had uh, his life to live all over again. Well, Wellington thought for a moment, then he replied, he said, I would simply give more praise. Can I just ask you the question? If you had an opportunity to do some things over again in your life, would you decide and declare to just give God praise? Yeah. If you had another opportunity where the Lord 
came into your house and he fixed it for you, would you create praise? Would you just make some space in your house? Matter of fact, that's what you're going to do. We're going to praise God in the sanctuary. But then when you get in your car, you're going to create space in your vehicle to give God praise. And people are going to look at you like you crazy, but they don't understand why you praise God the way you praise God. You're going to praise him in your car. And I need for some of you to understand that some of your praise is going to pull some things down from eternity. Did you hear what I said? Because somewhere it's recorded that when praises go up, that blessings come down. I need somebody to make space to give God praise. Not just in the sanctuary because we're working on our praise in the sanctuary. It's a good thing and it's easy. Listen to this to give God praise when everything is going good in your house. It's good to give God praise when you're in the church with other people that give God praise and encourage you along the way. It's a good thing to give God praise. Yes, it is. But can I ask you a question? What about when you're by yourself and you can't pay a doggone bill when you're by yourself and there's sickness in your body when you're by yourself and the bills keep coming? Will you still give God praise? I declare on this Palm Sunday that somebody needs to give God God, a praise. I need about five of y'all right now to testify with your praise. You don't have to tell me the Lord made a way for me. You don't have to tell me he woke me up this morning. You, you don't have to tell me he paid your rent. You don't have to tell me he paid your car payment. You don't have to tell me he helped your marriage. All you got to do is throw up some praise. And when you throw up praise, I see it. I see God is working. I see there's some blessings coming. I see that the Lord opened the doors. I see some bills got paid. I see some children on the right track. Yeah, and so you came to get a praise, but your praise is going to leave here. It's going to go in the car, and then it's going to go to your house, and you're going to praise in your house. As a matter of fact, you open up the door, open up the windows, and you got to let folk know in your neighborhood who you serve and you praise God in your house. But can I help somebody who's struggling on your job? you got to learn to give God praise on your job. Just pull back that cubicle. Pull the chair back and give God a praise. Do I have any praises in here? Anybody in here who can testify do your praise that there is power in your praise there is authority in your praise and I'm a praise and like I don't have any sense do I have folk like that in here you don't have any sense and you're going to praise God with everything you've got you're going to praise him with all of your energy you're going to praise him with all of your strength I need some praisers I need some praisers go deep down in your belly and lift up the name of Jesus lift him up and say thank you Jesus you made a way for me thank you Jesus you opened up some doors thank you God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power that's always established in it. And we come today for a Palm Sunday praise to celebrate the triumphal entry. We praise you and celebrate you as 
this we're sitting on the cusp we're right on the edge of the week of passion going into the death burial and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior God thank you for this moment in time and space you've given us thank you for your word and may your word do what you purposed for it to do in this space in Jesus name amen and thank God come on stand with me will you stand with me will you stand with me I want to just very quickly I want to open the doors of the church I do I do I do I want to open the doors of the church what an awesome opportunity it is right now for somebody to say you know what I'm ready to give my life to Jesus I am this this first day of Holy Week I'm ready I'm ready to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I have some things I need to accomplish, some places I need to go, some people I need to connect with, and there's no way I'm going to be able to accomplish that unless I develop a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe there's somebody here today, and this word, it blessed you, it touched you, and it said to you, you know what, it's time for you to connect with the Lord Jesus Christ to develop a relationship. Well, if that's you, I want to offer you Jesus today and forever. Wherever you are in this grand auditorium, I want you to just step out to the nearest aisle. I want you to come and I want you to connect with Christ because Jesus has purpose for your life. He has purpose. He's getting ready to do some new and great things in your life. Uh, but you have to make the connection you have to make the connection now and so we open the doors we extend the invitation to Christian discipleship to you will you come will you just come and give your heart give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ today just just move the enemy out of your way and take one step and God will finish it for you I'm coming because I want to give my life and I want to give my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Yes, 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 right there. Yes, God bless you. Is there another, is there another who will come, who will come strong, who will come strong with faith? I'm coming strong to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ today. That's the first invitation. The second invitation it is simple. It goes like this. I already have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I do. But I want to join the Simon Temple AME Zion Church. I just want to join the church. I need to join a Bible preaching, Bible teaching, loving community of believers. And Simon Temple is that place. If I'm talking to you, I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to come. It's open for salvation and membership. Salvation and membership. I want to get saved, but I also want to join the church. The doors of the church are open. It's open. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming. We're just going to take just a few more moments and, 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 and we're going to leave. But if you're, if you're watching us, the phone number is there. Call us at 855-979-9804 or email us at info at simontemple.com. We're ready to receive you online by way of phone call. Just call us, hit us up, and we're ready to receive you. I feel you coming, even virtually. I feel you coming. Oh, look at somebody say amen. God bless you. We are so delighted that Brother Bullock decided that he wanted to come to us and become a part of the Simon Temple AME Zion Church. Amen. Amen. He said that he got exactly what he needed to get and that he's in the right place. And this is where God wants him to be. And so we receive him today by God's grace. Amen. All right, look at somebody say, it's a good day. It's a good day. Amen. You all have your, your palm, your palm branches. You have them. All right. 
Do not use them as switches. See, when I was growing up, you know, they would do Hosanna uh, in, in one hand, and, and if you got on it, Hosanna. So let's, 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 let's continue to celebrate. Uh, we're, we're moving into this holy week, uh, the first day, uh, the week of passion. Our Christ rides in to Jerusalem, and uh, we know what he's up against, what Christ is getting ready to face. We'll be able to talk more about it uh, this week, um, and uh, we certainly look forward to sharing with you uh, on Sunday morning uh, as God will celebrate uh, Resurrection Sunday morning, uh, where he's no longer dead, he got up. Amen. He got up with all power in his hands. Amen. Come on, let's pray now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us spotless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. 